Hello again. Let's derive the time of flight formula for projectile motion in physics. For this tutorial, we're going to assume that you've seen our presentation on the six basic projectile motion equations in physics. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check that out first beforehand. Let's get into it. So the time of flight. What that means is when a projectile is fired, how long does it take in seconds until it reaches the ground again? Okay, we're assuming it's fired from ground level. Now in order to do this, we're gonna bring one of our six basic projectile motion formulas or equations back here. We're gonna use this equation. So here it is, and what formula does this represent? This represents the vertical position of the projectile as it's flying through the air. Okay, as the t values, t starts at zero here, as t increases to one, two, three, it actually flies through this path here. Okay, and as we're flying through a path, it's actually uh, has a position x, y, okay? And it's telling us this y value, okay, as t increases. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we are interested in what time is it when it reaches the ground again, okay? We're assuming that it's fired from ground level and it's gonna return to ground level. Well, let's call this time t equals, we're gonna call it capital T. And so when it's at ground level over here, what can we assume? Well, we can also assume that ground level is y equals zero. Okay, so we're going to substitute in y equals zero. And we're also going to say that little t is going to be the capital T. Okay, the time of flight that we want. Let's substitute these two values in to this equation here. It's going to give us zero equals v naught capital T sine theta minus a half g capital T squared. And we have to solve this for capital T. Okay, we're looking for this time here. What can we do? Well, we can factor out a capital T here. And what goes inside? T times what gives this? V naught sine theta. T times what gives this? Well, we've got T squared, this is gonna be negative one half G T. Okay, so T times a half G T is gonna be a half G T squared. Now what we have is, this times this equals this. We have our multiplication property, our product property. One thing times another thing giving zero. Okay, uh, so if you're unfamiliar with that rule. So we've got something times something equaling zero. Something times something equaling zero means this must be zero or this must be zero. So we could say this must be zero or this must be zero. So why do we get two values though? Well, we're getting two separate values. How many times is the particle at ground level? Well, it's actually at ground level twice when it's initially fired, which is this one, okay? So this t equals zero represents when it's here. That's actually not what we're interested in. It's true, but it's not what we're interested in. We're interested in the other one. So this time over here must be given by this equation. So let's solve this one. Let's take the half gt squared, the negative a half gt squared, to the other side, v naught sine theta equals one half g t. Now we want to get t alone, so let's get rid of that half by multiplying both sides by two, which gives us two v naught sine theta equals. Okay, and then the half times two is just going to give one, and we're going to be left with g t over here. One more step, let's get rid of the g by dividing it on both sides. G's cancel out and we're going to be left with, and we'll flip this around, t equals 2 v naught sine theta all over g. And there it is, okay, the formula for the time of flight of a projector being fired from ground level and landing at ground level. Two times the value for the initial velocity Okay, that it's being fired at this angle theta. Okay, so sine of this angle times the velocity times two divided by your g value, acceleration due to gravity. There you go, time of flight of a projectile. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.